Okay, so Pi News episode 34. So first up, a story from Notebook Check. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation reveals details on its next single board computers. Uh, basically in the article, uh, the Pi 5 is mentioned, as is the Pi 4A. Uh, and what the Pi 4A will be like uh, is similar to this where we've got a Pi 3. So this is the Pi 3B, so the full size single board computer. Uh, and then the, the A variant of it tends to be smaller. So you can see in this, there's only one USB A socket. Uh, overall the device is quite a lot smaller so it will be cheaper but it should have the same sort of compatibility as the Raspberry Pi 4B uh, so for some projects I can see that being an advantage it kind of treads on the toes a little bit on the compute module but the key thing is that because the 4A is based on the 4B pretty much everything that is written for the 4B and that's the most supported platform on the Pi definitely now uh, will work on the 4A the more models the merrier and while we're mentioning Compute Module 4, there was a story on Tom's hardware recently. The Raspberry Pi 4 Compute Module 4 upgraded to 128 gig of onboard storage. And that's eMMC storage. So reasonably fast storage, uh, not SSD speeds, but uh, as I did in a recent Raspberry Pi key video, better than SD card performance and also supposed to be very, very reliable for data retention. Next up, I had a comment from Alan Stedman about uh, a competition on the Raspad 3 forum. I'm not sure if the competition's over, but there's interesting information on it. Let's have a look and see if we can find a competition date. Our oh, first 50 members, so it probably has gone now. Uh, but basically, uh, the Raspad 3 is a tablet for the Raspberry Pi 4, and it is excellent. I've done a video on it, and I, I use it quite often, uh, especially for testing operating systems. So if we scroll down through, there are various different things. Raspad running Bitscope, an image viewer, uses a daily PC. And this is a weird one. I'm using it to develop an e-ink smart home monitoring frame. So e-ink very, very good on power consumption, uh, like in the Kindles. Lineage OS, which I run on mine. Abel Paz's four-year-old is using it for Scratch, uh, which is uh, pretty impressive for that age. So a 10 terabyte NAS drive. Controlling 3D printers is a good use for it because obviously it's such a small form factor but a nice decent sized display and there's loads more on there. I won't go through all of them but uh, oh, you can see retro gaming is obviously going to be a key one in there and there's more pages of this so I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look through those but it might give you some ideas if you've already got a Raspad 3. So next up, not strictly Raspberry Pi, but it kind of is relevant. Uh, so the Steam Deck was announced, uh, and if I click on it, it's from Steam, so it plays Steam games. It looks like a Nintendo Switch, but the controllers don't come off. But it is very powerful. It's using uh, a decent AMD processor. Now I've reserved one of these. Um, I don't know what will happen. Uh, I figured it's only £4 to reserve in the UK. I think it's $5 in the States. And uh, basically what will happen is you can choose to come out of it any time. You can get your money back, but you're kind of showing interest. But I did hear on some of the podcasts that you need to have an active Steam account to be accepted on it. So you have to have used the Steam account fairly recently. But uh, I'll think about it. There's plenty of time. I'm not sure if I will buy it, but uh, I've opted for the NVMe one because I know how much difference fast storage makes to a device. Uh, and also 64 gigs is going to be a little bit low, especially if you end up putting Windows 10 on it. Uh, although it runs Linux, uh, and it's I think it's based on Arch Linux, and it uses something called Proton, uh, which is already there to make games more compatible from Steam to run on Linux systems. Uh, it kind of is like a compatibility layer, um, so it, it supports loads of different games. But the one thing that was a little bit disappointing uh, for the Raspberry Pi side of it is that uh, it's still going to be based on x86 architecture. So we've got that Proton layer. That, the good thing about that is it gonna, it's going to mean that lots of money is spent on that and lots of time trying to make all these games compatible, which is good news for the Pi. But because it's based on x86, so like a desktop architecture or a laptop architecture, not an ARM processor like the Pi is, we aren't going to get maybe as, as much support as I thought we would have. But it's still good news anyway, and it looks like a very smart product. And next up was a cool video by uh, Fire Marshmallow 3 uh, It's called Zippy3, and you can see there's a GoPro on top of it, or something like a GoPro, and uh, it is a remote control vehicle. But it goes across uh, really loads of different terrains, and it really goes quite fast. And the good thing about it as well is there's uh, a blog on it, and it's got loads and loads of details. So you can see 
Uh, it's got pretty big tracks on it, big rubber tracks, and it's based on a Raspberry Pi Zero W, and you can see all the bits are listed, so if you plan on doing this yourself, but it have a look at the, the proper video, because it really zips along. I'll link the video and this in the description. Look at that, there's teardown videos as well, all sorts of information. I love, I love seeing all these close-ups of how these things are put together, uh, and they're talking about what surfaces it can ride on. Next up, if you're interested in trying Stardew Valley on Raspberry Pi, uh, there are instructions on Reddit, and again, I'll put a link in the description. It's not necessarily a game I would play, um, but it has very good reviews, and if it's the sort of game you want and you want to be able to play it on the Pi, give it a try. Uh, there's quite detailed instructions there. Next up, Windows 10 or Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 4 now doesn't need a Windows computer to complete the installation. If you go to the Windows on Raspberry Pi homepage, you go to Guides, How to Install, and How to Install from Other OSs. Uh, now, I always use Windows because the method is a lot easier, but there is uh, very detailed instructions on how to get it working uh, if you haven't got Windows and you've got Linux. And also thanks to the comments uh, that let me know about the new Bluetooth driver. It has just been updated, so if you're using the Windows installation method uh, and the latest drivers, then Bluetooth is actually working now. So I saw this story on Ubuntu Touch coming July 14th. And uh, I figured I'd try it out on the Raspberry Pi because there is a version for the Raspberry Pi, it's listed. But it's not official and it's still in beta. And uh, it, it's weird because the display works here, but you'll see when it goes back to the graphical display, uh, it's all garbled. And I've tried changing a few settings and I just couldn't get it to work. Uh, but it looks like it would be quite an interesting thing to try on that touch device. Um, so if anybody's got any tips or if they know how to get around it, they could let me know. You can see it's upside down, but it's showing the text all right when it's in terminal. I'll put links to the uh, download, which is here, and also to the forums as well, so you can have a look through. In fact, I haven't gone through all the way through this thread, so there may be an answer in this somewhere. Next up, I had some comments on this video, so Ubuntu 21.10, uh, which is actually what I'm using, so that's I'm using this Ubuntu. Uh, but if I press the Windows key, uh, it has the older interface. It doesn't have the GNOME 40 interface. So we scroll down through... So from Gaston here, if you go into software and updates, developer options, let's have a look. Settings, is it about? Software updates, developer options, pre-released updates, put my password in. So sudo apt update and sudo app full dash upgrade. Yes, so it's finding quite a few things to update. I'm sure I saw GNOME 40 go past then. So that's finished, so if I hit the Windows key, uh, it's still using the old interface. So let's do reboot. Okay, so that's booting up now. And I'm running this from an M.2 drive. I've done a previous video on this, but this Argon adapter uh, with an M.2 drive is a great combination with the Pi. And this is my Pi 4 8 gig. So let's go back to Ubuntu. And you can see from how it started up that it's definitely using the newer interface. So if I start opening some things up, so files, uh, LibreOffice Writer, software updates, terminal, and imager. Uh, and then if I press the Windows key, you can see that it nicely arranges them. So it's very easy to see what's on your desktop and to be able to switch between them. If I drag the terminal over to the right desktop, you can see that it arranges these again. Uh, and then I can click between the two different desktops a really nice interface, I really like this. And I've kind of got used to the, the side taskbar and I actually like it now. I normally would move it down to the bottom, but yeah, I do actually like it. Let's just show NeoFetch uh, just to show how the update has gone. So Ubuntu Impish Injury Development, uh, been up and running for 10 minutes. It's on GNOME 40.2 and this is my uh, Pi 4 8 gig running at 2.2 gigahertz. I think I've probably got it overclocked to 2147, but it often misreports it as 22. Now, Raspberry Pi Imager is a brilliant tool for the Pi, and I wouldn't be without it on a Linux operating system. But uh, the standard install didn't seem to work from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. But something interesting happened when I put it in. And here we go on the main site. So if I scroll down through, you can get it from the downloads page sudo apt install raspberry pi imager pop that into terminal and it came up with this message no apps package but there is a snap with that name try snap install rpi imager 
So I did that, and I know I've obviously already got it installed, but I'll show you how it does it. Okay, so it comes up with a message saying is already installed. So let's remove it with snap remove rpi-imager. And you can see it's disappeared on the left. And let's put it back in just to show what it does. And it's come back on the bar. There you go, RPI Imager 1.6.2 from Alan Pope, Popey installed. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.